This is subtopic 8.2, properties of acids and bases. We're going to talk about acids and bases and aqueous solutions, and of course all bronsted lower acids produce the common ion hydrogen plus, and bases in solution produce hydroxide, the common anion. These acid-base reactions all neutralize each other to produce water. Now the bases that dissolve in water, soluble bases, are called alkalis, and the alkalis form OH in solution. But the alkalis are just a subset of all bases which accept hydrogen plus. Alkalis, that should sound familiar to you. That, of course, is a group in the periodic table. The left-hand group, actually hydrogen doesn't count as an alkali, even though we put it in the far left column because it just has one electron in its outer shell. We need a couple terms here before we get into this. First, dissociation and ionization are used interchangeably because when an acid dissociates, it breaks apart, the hydrogen ion leaves the acid. This, of course, always makes ionization, well, at least inside an aqueous solution. And the hydrogen, of course, is the cation. What's left behind will be an anion. To illustrate the point, we have hydrochloric acid. Hydrochloric acid is a strong acid. It really wants to dissociate. And when it does, it makes two ions, ionization. Indicators are what we use to recognize acidic and basic solutions. They change color reversibly according to the concentration of hydrogen ions in the solution. Individually, they're not very good at distinguishing acid or base strength. They just tell us whether it is an acid or a base. Now, there's some examples here. Litmus, which is the most famous one, hence the expression litmus test. It turns pink when it's in an acidic environment and blue in an alkaline environment which is why people commonly think of acid as pink or red and alkali or bases as blue. But other indicators have different colors. Methyl orange, for example, is red in acid and yellow in base, and phenolphthalein, or PHPH, is colorless in acid and pink in base. And you should remember this from the very first acid-base titration we did with hydrochloric acid and sodium hydroxide. Universal indicator is what we get when we mix a whole bunch of different indicators. And this is great because then we can see the strength of an acid or base. In fact, in this, um, in this picture here, it's all actually the same blend of universal indicator. Because each test tube has a different strength acid or base environment. The strongest acid being on the far left and the strongest base being on the far right. We're going to talk about three classes of reactions. Acid and a metal make salt and hydrogen gas. Acid in a base makes salt and water. An acid in a carbonate makes salt, water, and carbon dioxide. First we'll look at when we mix an acid and a metal, and we're going to get salt and hydrogen gas. The first example is hydrochloric acid with zinc, which makes zinc chloride and hydrogen gas. We can also do this with sulfuric acid and iron, and acetic acid and magnesium. Now, acetic acid is also called ethanoic acid. We can see that if we write ionic equations, we can simplify the reaction. Here we've got our hydrochloric acid and zinc again. And we can write it out as an ionic <laughs> equation where we break everything apart. And there's the two hydrogen ions and then two chloride ions plus zinc, which is neutral by itself, forming zinc two plus ion and two chloride one minus ions, which is why they stick together and make zinc chloride and hydrogen gas. And you see that the common ions, chloride ion is the same one left and right, so they cancel each other out. And we get a simpler equation, hydrogen ions plus zinc gives zinc plus and hydrogen gas. We can see that the same logic applies to our other two examples, and they simplify to basically the acid plus the metal gives the metal ion plus hydrogen gas. We're also going to look at acid and base makes salt and water which is just like our very first lab where we took hydrochloric acid and sodium hydroxide which makes salt and water. Of course salt and ACL that we eat on our food is an example of a salt, the class of chemicals, which is what you get when the leftover parts of an acid and base after they dissociate they come together and stick together again when you've got a metal that is. And sodium here is the metal which would form a cation after the sodium hydroxide dissociates and it'll stick together with a chloride ion that forms after the hydrochloric acid dissociates. The same thing here happens with nitric acid and ammonium hydroxide. And then here we have acetic or thanoic acid again with copper oxide. 
And these also simplify, like the last class did, where we just have hydrogen and hydroxide forming water. Everything else is just a spectator. Last, we have an acid and carbonate making salt, water, and carbon dioxide. This is similar to the last group because carbonates are bases. For example, hydrochloric acid and calcium carbonate making calcium chloride, the salt, and water and carbon dioxide. We can do the same thing with sulfuric acid and sodium carbonate or acetic acid and potassium bicarbonate. Now, if you look at these, for example, the middle one, there is SO4 on both sides of the equation. There's also sodium, Na2, on both sides. So these are going to be common ions, and if we write the ionic equations, they'll cancel out. The pattern will apply to all three of these, and it's really just hydrogen plus carbonate makes water and carbon dioxide. Everything else that we saw in there is what we call spectator ions. The end. Thank you.